Hi, um, anybody who comes across this video, then um, this is a collective reading. I'm just gonna be um, saying whatever comes through. Um, so these will be messages that are for the um, highest good of anybody who they are for, uh, for the most healing, the most clarity, and um, for the most, from the most divine. So I'm just gonna pull, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of just go with it and, and just see what happens. And um, if something resonates with you, then you can book a personal reading with me. Um, I'll leave the website in the description box if you want a more in-depth look on um, something that I picked up on in the general. So let's just get right into it. So what um, do you want the people coming across this video? What do you want to touch on? One card, please. Okay. Seven of Cups wants to come out. Give me one more card, please. Three of Swords. One more. Seven of Swords. Um, bottom of the deck is the Nine of Wands. So I feel this um, sort of tightness in my... Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> that might be significant for somebody. I don't know. But um, <laughs> so Seven of Cups is about... It can be about um, your imagination. It can be about um, overthinking. It can also be about options or, or choices. Um, Three of Swords is, is clear. It's about heartbreak, um, deception, pain, sorrow, loss. And Seven of Swords is sometimes related to um, deception and, and cheating and like just really like just betrayal in general um but it also can be a card of kind of going your own way and forging your own path um and then the nine of wands being kind of like the overall energy um and the the main reason why these cards came out it is telling me because this card um signifies strength and resilience and overcoming adversity and um, this card also talks about um, overcoming these things, but still having a chip on your shoulder and, and still fearing the worst, still having those same thought patterns and those same um, expectations of um, things not going your way because they never have or you felt like they never have or, or people have always done you wrong. Um, so, so you still have these, these weary thoughts, these weary feelings and, and just fears and anxieties that, um, really have a hold on you truly enjoying your experience. Even if you have been blessed with, with say a, a great relationship or, or somebody who, who isn't, you know, deceptive, who isn't going to break your heart, who isn't, you know, looking at all the other options that they could have. Even if you have somebody who's loyal and who's who's loving, who's who you have prayed for and hoped for, the nine of wands is still being in that energy of overprotective of yourself. And there are going to be people who say you can never be too overprotective. That is wrong. <laughs> you can be so overprotective to a point that you don't allow yourself to receive, that you don't allow yourself to feel love that you've finally been blessed with. And you can't even tell the difference between um, somebody who's deceptive, somebody from who is like somebody from your past or what you're used to dealing with to what's new because you are still in this, you're still seeing things from this same viewpoint of this will always be my story. These people did this to me, so therefore 
it, people will always do that to me. All people are like this. People suck. Um, all men are like this. All women are like that. They, nobody's loyal. Hoes ain't loyal. Like, <laughs> like going through life like that is not going to fulfill anybody. And, you know, it's, it's hard to overcome these negative patterns when it's all you've known so there's compassion in that there's understanding in that um but the the main thing is that you have a choice you have a choice um how you want to live you you have this life you know this is the only life that you know as of now that you have so why waste it worrying why waste it um being fearful, worrying, um, thinking the worst. You know, everybody has a light in them. Everybody has, they're, they're a pure part of them. Um, it's the things that we, we go through that make us, you know, hard, that make us um, angry and, and resentful. But these things are not free. Like being resentful of people from your past and being um, still carrying that hurt or still carrying that that resentment toward them is not free for you to carry just because they did it to you. It still costs you um, new experiences. It still costs you being able to receive love when it's finally in your face. Um, yeah, Six of Swords is about transition. It's about moving from chaos and, and you know just battle and and strife to to calmer land to calmer waters to peace it's all about moving forward or or changing you know moving to somewhere that um is serving you and that could be moving to a place within yourself that's serving you like changing your mindset or changing how you view things. And it's not an overnight process. Maybe for some people it might be, but um, it's years of, of trauma that you have to heal and, and, and uncover and um, emotions and hurt and pain that you have to dissect and, and allow God, spirit, the divine to help you unravel so that you can be your best self so that you can receive all of the blessings and 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 joy and bliss and love that this you know life has to offer you and also so you can be in your purest form as possible so that you can live out your purpose your god-given purpose um you know it's hard to be living in purpose in service of of the divine if you are not a clear person if you are not clear-hearted if you are still harboring unforgiveness and resentment you know you can't be a clear channel for yourself or god you know you you can't listen clearly when you're still holding on to those things because it just it's baggage and it's baggage that you don't have to carry it's not yours to carry um you know the god handles those things and not meaning that they you know cause um all sorts of crazy things that happen to these people who did you wrong i mean maybe but that's not the point the point is to focus on you and how you can grow and how you can um you know attract better for yourself than you've dealt with in the past so let me pull um a few more cards can i have three more cards thank you one card at a time though what do you want um whoever comes across this video to know three of cups three of cups is about community it's about um i'm hearing conjoining it's also about um unity I, I actually feel like this is you uniting all the parts of you that um, parts of you that you may be have been hiding or or you've been too scared to show the world or you've been 
you know, because of the experiences you've had and how people have treated you, you've kept certain parts of you um, out of view and you've, you've um, neglected them. So this is, you know, coming, having those parts of you start coming together. One card, please. And also I'm getting from this card being present, um, being more present in your life, be, taking literally moment by moment. The hangman, the hangman is all about changing perspective. It's all about changing your mindset. It's about looking at things in a different way. Um, hearing this will free you. If you can be open to letting God kind of show you what you're not seeing or what you haven't been willing to see because you've been so stuck on what if. What if they hurt me? What if this isn't it? Even though you have all the signs you possibly can that it is. Or what if... I don't succeed. What if I can't make my rent next month? Like just things like that. It's it's letting letting go and letting God. That's basically what the message is. One more, please. One more card. Two of Wands. Two of Wands is about patience. It's about waiting. It's about um, where am I going? What is next for me? Um, where are you taking me, God? <laughs> like, where am I going? <laughs> um, also with Four of Swords at the bottom, Four of Swords is about healing. It's about reflection. It's about introspection. It's about um, taking a step back and looking at things from a different viewpoint, from an objective view. Um, literally actually looking at things, looking at yourself, looking at why do I do that? Why do I feel that way about that or why why am i still so angry why do i feel so trapped like just actually asking yourself these these questions and being able to um nurture yourself counsel yourself and once coming to these awarenesses and these um clarifying moments of who you've been and and where you want to be these are going to be the moments that are pivotal and that change your life um, is being more self-aware and really actually taking the, the time to instead of going, going, going to um, get to know yourself and not judge yourself while getting to know yourself, actually being accepting of yourself and, and all the parts of you, even the ones that you don't like, the ones you haven't faced. Um, it's what we're here for. And it's what's all it's what all your experiences in life have been there to show you. They've been there to show you you. They've been there to show you what you want and what you don't want, what's real, what's not, what's worth it, what's not worth it, like what is valuable to you. These are what all these experiences have been there to show you. Even the negative ones. They've been there as a teacher. And when you can start looking at yourself and the the experiences you've had from it from a different view, um, even just like doing something like kind of making it like okay, what? Let me let me see. How would God look at my life? What would He think of my life? Like, if I was the if I was God, what would I think of my life? Like, just kind of playing like like just having those conversations with yourself and and putting yourself in different positions and i mean obviously too much of that is detrimental can be but um if this is something that you haven't done yet you're being called to you're being called to introspect because you're going to actually find a lot of wisdom a lot of answers that you've been seeking you're going to find actually within you and within you looking at yourself you already have them you already have the answers and um it's just about actually you know like waking these parts of you up and um i feel like that's the main message that's coming through is that spirit wants you to start looking um within more and start trusting yourself more and and start unraveling your experiences and your life here and so you can really 
figure out what it is you actually want for yourself. What do you actually want to be? What do you actually want to do? What would really fulfill you? And if you don't know, that's fine too. Um, that just means there's more work to do on yourself and there's more um, learning to do on yourself. And so I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Yeah, Eight of Swords, feeling trapped. Feeling trapped, but not actually being trapped. She has the power to unravel herself. She's just choosing. She she just can't see clearly because, you know, um, she's blindfolded. But she's blindfolded, folding herself because she's actually free the whole time. This is a self-inflicted um, entrapment. The power is in you. And you've always had this power. But again, it's about waking yourself up. Like looking back at, and seeing all the, your experiences and realizing you wouldn't be who you are if you didn't have all of those experiences. Like you wonder, um, if I didn't go through that, like would I be who I am today? Probably not. And that's the point. And at the time when we feel we messed up or we made mistakes or we you know, allowed somebody to treat us a certain way, we didn't know any better at the time. And you really start doing better for yourself and start treating yourself better and setting the right boundaries and, and um, knowing more of what's for you as you evolve and as you know better. So I hope that this helped somebody. Let me know um, if this resonated. Again, I'll leave um, my info, the website to book reading readings or healings with me if anybody's interested. And I will post again soon. Bye.